Is that the man himself over there? It's me. How you going, Paulie? So, you ready to go? I'm game. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Wipe this thing off. Hey, Dusty. How you doing, Paulie? You know, you're one of my favorite people. Likewise. <laughs> Where do you have right now? Everybody doesn't know that we sat in a van for a week yapping at each other in the back seat, right? I know. I why don't have- you, you tell that story? Where were we? I don't even remember where we were going. We were in New York, New Hampshire. Yeah. There's me, you, and uh, Mark Holcomb. And Peter. Not a few, though. We've, we've done some with Zach and Emil. God, was that was so much fun. We got to do it again. Yeah. So I have questions for you, but the first one is your family okay? Is everything all right? Yeah, everybody's good, man. We're just, you know, staying out of Dodge, following directions, you know, just waiting to see what happens. That's smart. All right, so I'm going to ask you questions you know that I've never asked you, and I've asked you a lot of questions. All right. Is that are you up for it? Yeah. All right, so I want to know what – your hobbies are the things outside of guitar playing what you never told me um me and pretty much everyone in my band are big sports fans i love boxing um boxing and football are probably my uh you know my favorite sports i do a lot of i like to fish even though i haven't been able to fish for a while i I like fishing too yeah i'm pretty simple man you know, guitar takes over 90% of my life. So it's still a, it's still a hobby, even though it's my job. So that's nice. Me, me too. In a way, me too. How would you describe your sound? How do you think about it? Um, it's definitely aggressive. Um, I'm pretty heavy handed. So I think I... Our longtime producer always says I have extra gain in my hands. So I would say it's kind of aggressive, um, but also very, like my goal as a guitar player is to be very vocal. All my favorite players are very vocal in their playing. And, um, you know, the goal for me is to be versatile. I want to be able to leave an impression no matter what I'm playing. So when we play this back, you should watch what Warren Haynes said, what Ori said, what all these guitar players, they're all talking about the guitar being a vocal instrument. And if you can't sing it, don't play it. Yeah. Warren was quoting uh, the guitar player from Mountain, Leslie West. And Felix Papillardi told him, if you can't sing it, don't play it. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. You know, it's pretty easy to overplay, you know. You're kind of a foodie too, right? I don't know that I'd call myself a foodie. I do like food, you know, but I, I don't know that I'd call myself a foodie. <laughs> All right. So what is this, your favorite restaurant ever? Never asked you that. Oh, man. Favorite restaurant ever. Damn. I can tell you what uh, it was for me. Yeah. What is yours? I was in Austin, Texas, and I had barbecue at a place called Opie's. It was the only time I ever wanted to go out back, throw up, and do it again. I've never experienced anything like it in my life. And I was not alone. Everybody else was losing it. There's a there's a place in my hometown that is kind of like a uh, – it's like su- fine southern cuisine. Yeah. Um, and it's called Mazelle's, and it's it's pretty incredible. I always, always try to go in there when I'm home. Um, I really like southern food obviously being from North Carolina and um, they do it in a very nice way and it's very creative, you know, like you get fried chicken with peach chutney on it and stuff. You know what I mean? I grew up on Southern food. So, you know, we would have okra soup or we would have, my mother would make me a plate of grits and she would put the butter for the eyes and the nose and the mouth and it would melt into the grits and I'd stir it all up in the morning. You know, I had a happy face for breakfast. Never liked hominy very much. Won't touch chitlins, but I'll tell you, when it comes to fried chicken and oh, there's or, or lamb shanks or oh god, I can give you a list. My mouth just start watering right now. 
greens. I love that stuff. Meat and threes. Greens got to be done. Yeah, meat and threes. Those are, I love little family style restaurants. You know, it's, it's nothing too fancy, but it's always good. And they're always real nice. So what's going on musically with you right now? With you all shut down for the moment? Well, we, um, you know, we had a tour, our 20 year as a band, Evening With tour, you know, we were going to be the only band and um, do two and a half sets. And that's getting postponed due to the, you know, coronavirus thing. But um, so with that being said, I'm just kind of writing music and um, kind of uh, rebuilding my rig from scratch, trying some other things and uh, just that, just being, trying to be creative. Um, I live with musicians, so we, um, we're working on like a, a Richard Marks cover right now. I'm just kind of rocking it up. Which tune? Should have known better. It's fun. It's coming out really awesome. Good music. But, yeah, just stuff like that. I like, it kind of helps just with, you know, the whole thing I was saying about being versatile. Yeah. Playing, trying to play everything, just kind of record your takes on it and whatnot. I think one of the best lines of this thing is that I have more gain in my hands. Everybody has different sounding hands. I can't tell you how many times I've handed my guitar to another guitar player and it was thick and dark in my hands and bright in their hands. Yeah. Or the opposite. Oh, he's got bright hands. He's got dark hands, you know. Well, it's the same with like being, you know, being a singer or being a drummer. That's the, the most, that's my favorite part about instruments about music is everyone's got their own identity you know that's that's the goal you know have your own sound um for you know like you're driving down the road and like i've said a million times a van halen song comes on you know exactly who it is you know it could be like a new song or you still be you would still know that was eddie van halen you know yeah all right so do you have some questions for me dusty Man, I've been thinking about this all day, and there's a million questions I could ask you, but... Well, you've got um, way too many brain cells. Go for the big ones. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this one because it's fun, and I've had fans ask me this before because they've heard me drop... They've heard me drop this before, and it may not be the most interesting question to guitar heads, but for me, it's, it's fun. So oh. I want to know what the experience was like providing a guitar for a major movie when in airheads, when they, they, you know, they hold up a radio station and they're one of their first, his first request is a PRS guitar with a dragon inlay. What was that like? They wanted a dragon guitar for the movie and they were going to break it. And we went, okay, we can do that. Let's take a photograph of the inlay. Let's print it out on a color printer and glue each of the inlays on top of a regular fretboard so that from four feet, it looks like it was a dragon guitar. We gave them the real one, and then we gave them the one to break. So they, the real one got returned, and the broken one was smashed into bits. What's not known is somebody took the broken one out of the dumpster, glued it back together, and sold it. Wow. So we weren't told how the scene was going to go, really. We kind of knew that it was going to be held ransom, and that was the thing. But that wasn't the deal. The deal was that they needed a dragon guitar to borrow for the movie and one to break. And the job was, well, how are we going to do that? And we found the neck the other day. Scott Bloomfield, who's one of our – brilliant employees if you want a fret job he's the best guy on the planet as far as i'm concerned and um he pulled it out he somehow got it and he brought it in it was you know these old this paper you know xeroxed <laughs> dragon pictures glued to the fretboard it worked he smashed it somebody had glued it together and sold it on ebay that was I, a painful scene to watch man Ah, it was great. You know, ah, you remember it. It was great. Yeah. It was every dime. Yeah, that was probably my first. That was the first PRS I ever saw. I think because I was pretty young. Um, I was in elementary school, believe it or not. 
All right, we got one minute. You got any more questions? Um, <clears throat> have I changed your mind and your opinion on the Floyd Rose Trimlo? Yes, but you weren't the only person. You, oh, I'm Neil, sure. you Neil, a whole bunch of them. I think Floyd Roses are here to stay. I, he, they just had an anniversary. I wrote uh, this beautiful thing for them to read at the anniversary about the impact that he had on our business. Amazing. Um, I actually think Floyd Rose bridges sound pretty good. A lot of steel, a lot of weight. It's got a lot of ass. It's good. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was a good design. The problem is if you didn't have an Allen wrench set and you broke a string, <laughs> you weren't playing. Yeah, you got to have a backup. Yeah. At that time, there was not – that one didn't, didn't happen. This guy walked to me once. He says, you didn't have enough money to have the guitar from the guitar maker in Annapolis. Where'd you get that guitar? You don't dress well enough to have that guitar. The band cracked up because I, I made the guitar. I was the shoemaker with no money, you know. <laughs> I didn't have enough money for jeans, but I had one of my own guitars. Dusty, you're the best. Thanks for being on. Thanks, Paul. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye.